Welcome back to Trojan Corner. I'm Andy Kamenetsky, co-host of the Land of Lakers blog at ESPNLA.com and ESPN LA on air on 710 ESPN. Thank you for joining us before USC Washington homecoming for USC. Give it up. Give it Welcome up, give to USC. Up. Give it up. Give it up. You don't want to not give it up with this guy up here with me right now. My guest is a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the USC Hall of Fame, the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame, the New England Patriots Hall of Fame, and he is the all-time leading rusher in New England Patriots history. Take that, Kevin Falk. Sam Bam Cunningham. Give it up, a USC legend. Good morning, good morning, thank you. Thank you very much. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. And you, good. How are you good. doing? Good, good. Um, what led you to USC? You're, you're a Santa Barbara guy, correct? Yes. What, what led you to USC? Uh, Marv Gu, uh, he was a coach and here at USC, a defensive line coach, offensive line coach, uh, probably at the time the spirit of the, uni of, of the football team and he was born and raised in Santa Barbara and knew of me as a little kid, so kept an eye on me and g gave me the opportunity to become a Trojan and, and taught me how to be a Trojan. How much of the how much USC football had you watched growing up? Were they a program you were pretty aware of? Well, you know, back then it was only three channels, so no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but USC was it was was the program and the team that brought me in from outside playing football to watching it on television. So, uh, you know, the 64 USC U UCLA game was pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, OJ Simpson as a running back, Mike Garrett as a running back, uh, Coach McKay as a coach, and but you know, they had great teams even before that. So it, it, it was real attractive and, and gave me an opportunity to see some good football indoors as opposed to outdoors. How did you get the nickname BAM and who gave it to you? Uh, Lowell Schrader and um, the sports writer for the Herald Examiner kind of gave me that name as, as a freshman and sophomore here at USC so they were the ones that uh, instilled that into me so I, I really have no idea I guess it just kind of happened and they, they put it on me. So even as a freshman when you weren't playing they, they they recognize the BAM quality. Probably because only like 100 people came and watched the freshman games in the Coliseum, <laughs> and it was so loud, so yes. <laughs> now, your debut came your sophomore year in a game against Alabama that ended up meaningful on a historic level, and we're, we're going to get into that. But as a sophomore, starting fullback, how much time did you even expect to get in this game, and, and how involved did you think you'd be in the offense? Well, actually, Charlie Evans was the starting fullback as a sophomore. Oh. And he was a senior, a great fullback out of Gardena, great, great athlete out of Gardena. So I was a second-string fullback, and I probably started on special teams and didn't know how much time I'd get as an as a, as a actual fullback, but it ended up being more than I ever anticipated and it ended up being something so special that I didn't know how special it was till many years later. So when McKay called your number, you're like, really? <laughs> I mean, was it that surprising? Well, no, no, it wasn't that surprising. It's just that I knew that I couldn't make any mistakes because then he wouldn't call my name again. You know, that's how competitive it was. It's kind of like Coach Kiffin now, if you fumble, if you make mistakes, you, you don't play. Well, to put in perspective how few mistakes you made during this game against Alabama, 12 carries, 130 yards or 135? I've seen both. 135 yards. We're going to give you all 135 of them. 135 yards on 12 carries, two touchdowns. What's going through your mind in a game like this? Because th those are just absurd numbers. Uh... <laughs> Well, the holes were pretty big. I thought they were way bigger than the holes I had run through during spring practice. Right. So, it, it, you know, I mean, with holes that looked the size of, of garage doors, you know, I knew that if I fell down, got tackled, or fumbled the ball, that I was never going to play again. So, uh, you know, Alabama was a good team. They were not as good as us. But, uh, and they never really played anybody as good as us that early in the season. So, it was uh, a special game, kind of the perfect storm of a football game to, to make something happen in college football. I, 
College football must have seemed like a joke to you at this point, though. Your first game like this, 135 yards on 12 carries. I mean, it, it's got to... I can't imagine just coming out and having that type of debut. I mean, did, did it create expectations in terms of how the rest of your career was going to play out? No, no. My, my teammates and coaches made sure that <laughs> it didn't create anything above what it was, you know, right. uh, because the rest of the year, I probably never carried the ball 12 times in a game. And <laughs> I went back to being a, a regular USC fullback, which blocked. Uh, but. I also learned one thing that that away trips never really got the police escort, the mayor, the governor, the cheerleaders. After I went on the next road trip, I realized that was pretty special. You know, I didn't know. <laughs> I thought that's what happened every time we went out of town, but it didn't. Right, right. Now, beyond what happened on the field, though, the the aftermath of the game was even bigger. Your your performance in that game is largely credited to paving the way towards Bear Bryant, Alabama's legendary coach, working with integrated rosters. And there's been so much talk and, and even some dispute about how much interaction there was between you and Coach Bryant after the game. Can, can you break down what actually happened and how much you guys talked? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, there, there's talk that he took you into the locker room and said, this is a football player. Like, did that happen? Well, Andy, I guess if you never asked me the question, I, I wouldn't have to tell the truth. But no, uh, actually, after the game, uh, I was called outside our locker room just as Clarence Davis and Jimmy Jones. Uh, and Coach Bryant met us there and congratulated us on, a, on the performance that we had that evening. But... I guess the urban legend is is that I went into the locker room <laughs> and was put on the bench and in my whatever right and, and every player had to shake my hand but as as absurd as that story is the truth is is that that evening there was a changing of college football history and, right. and coach Bryant impressed upon his teammates that they would be uh, teammates of African American black a football players, black athletes. So the, the important thing is that is that we were a part of that and and became something special that the kids today don't really even think about. They don't even understand what happened that evening to, to give them the opportunity to be a part of these programs. Now I've talked before with Anthony Davis about the basically the 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 racial climate at the time in America and in college football and the game that he played, that you guys played at Notre Dame right after you guys had killed them in 72, and he showed up and there were basically images of Anthony Davis hanging in effigy and just how brutal that climate was. How consciously aware were you of, I guess, what was going on throughout the country, but also how integrated a team like USC was during that day? Was that something that you, I guess, was on the forefront of your consciousness even then? Uh, well, not really. See, I, I, I was just talking with a man at the table over there. I grew up in Santa Barbara, California, so my, my childhood was always integrated, immersed with different cultures, so but then I had teammates that grew up in Fresno and they were segregated. Right. So, uh, my deal was is is I always played on integrated teams and I've always played against teams that were all white. So it really, it was just a football game. Right. You know, uh, granted, I understood the civil rights climate at the time. You know, I, you know, I saw what was happening on TV. I understood the assassination of Dr. King. I understood the bombing of the churches with the little girls. I understood the the, the German shepherds and the fire hoses on everybody. I understood that. I saw that. But that's not how I grew up. Right. I grew up basically trying to be tolerant and let everybody pick and choose and be whoever they are. And if I liked you, I liked you. And if I disliked you, I disliked you. It didn't have anything to do with the color of your skin or, or who you believed in or, or what you liked or disliked. So uh, for me, I probably was more tolerant. If I grew up in Birmingham or the Deep South, then I would have a set attitude versus all that. But, you know, I was, I was blessed to be kind of in the rocking chair and just have a, a, a complete sense of what life could be. My guest, Sam Bam Cunningham, USC legend, <laughs> member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the USC Hall of Fame, the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame, 
the New England, New England Patriots Hall of Fame and the all-time leading rusher in Patriots history. We're talking about his debut sophomore year against Alabama, a game that he not only crushed Alabama almost single-handedly, but helped pave the way towards an integrated roster at Alabama and really across college football. Absolutely, give it up, give it up. Very important moment. Thank you. Very important moment. <laughs> what has it come since to mean to you 41 years later? Other than being old? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's a large part of what I've done and what I've ever done as a player has been more about the guys I played with and the coaches I played for. So what it has meant is that we were actually pretty good and we played well as a team. But to be a part of something that special is, is you know, there's like only one game that could ever happen like that. Right. And, and to be a part of it, you know, uh, is very, very special. And, and, and I truly want at some point in time to impress upon the younger players that play in this SEC and, in, and, and on those programs that benefited from that to understand how, how blessed they are to get that opportunity because at one point in time it never would have happened. Now you've written a book, you've co-written a book about this game, uh, Turning of the Tide, how one game changed the South. It is available on Amazon. If anybody's looking, that I brought that up, yes. not Sam. Yes, yes. And from what I heard, they they may be making it into a movie. Uh, hopefully, before I die, they'll make it into a movie. Uh, it would be a, a, a wonderful movie, a wonderful story, and 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 it and it will definitely bring honor upon us as Trojans and and uh, you know for our part in college football history to make a difference. Now, if. Sam Cunningham, the author, ends up Sam Cunningham, the producer, on this movie. Who plays Sam Cunningham in the movie, if you have your way? I have no idea. I just want to play my father. Really? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that, if anybody I, in this audience is a budding movie producer, let Sam Cunningham play his father. Make it happen. I, don't, be, I, I wouldn't really have to say a whole lot. I just got to sit and be quiet. Well, it's a fantastic story. <laughs> Sam Bam Cunningham, Thank my you. guest. USC football legend. You were part of the 1972 team that is considered by many the greatest in college football history. A lot of talent. How did you guys manage to keep all those egos in check and everybody on the same page? Andy, I don't, I don't even know how you have so much information over here. Google. <laughs> it's all Google. Well, uh, in 1969, a great group of guys came in as freshmen for for the Trojans and, and back then you couldn't be you couldn't play varsity until your sophomore year so every day we practice against the Wild Bunch so we were put in our place every day by a great group of guys and a great defensive team and 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 so by the time we became so seniors we were the leadership group of that 72 team and and back then you could only go to one bowl game which was the Rose Bowl if you didn't go to that game you sat at home and Lord knows watched every other bowl game that was there so our desire was to go to the Rose Bowl we we won a national championship by trying to get to the Rose Bowl so and it had to do with the great group of guys the leadership core that came in in 69 so uh, We've all, you know, as, 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 as Trojans, we've always had talent, but talent is, is, is remiss if you don't have a leadership core that brings everybody along and, and makes everybody accountable. So we were blessed to have that in 72, and we were blessed to have it in 69, so it just transferred into something special, and, and we went on and did our thing. And speaking of leadership, what made Coach McKay such a great coach? Well, back then, the, the, the head coaches were the stars and the icons of the program. Uh, you know, now you have players that are stars and icons, but back then, Coach McKay was the leader, and, and, and you took from him whatever it is you needed to do. He had the, he had the unique ability that when we didn't do well, he deflected all the negativity away from us and gave us an opportunity to be whatever we could be. So he was, in himself, he was special in that respect, and, and, and he was the leader of our team. My guest, Sam Bam Cunningham, USC football legend, member of the...
College Football Hall of Fame, the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame, USC Hall of Fame, New England Patriots Hall of Fame, all-time leading rusher in Patriots history. Last question for you. You are one of the all-time great fullbacks. And in today's NFL, college football, I wouldn't say the fullback has gone like quite the way of the leather helmet, but it's definitely not as prominent as it used to be in terms of the way it's used and the, and the position. What, what do you make of the way, I guess, things have changed in, in the modern football and uh, spread out and, and I guess sort of that disappearance of fullback? Well, you know, I don't... I, I guess I have to... When I, when I got inducted into the New England Patriot Hall of Fame, uh, Coach Belichick introduced me to his football team. And... He like knew all my history, and I just like you know all my history. So I guess you guys Google on the same internet spot. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he explained to his football team at that time that I was a player that would could play every down. Right. Uh, I think if you had more players of that caliber, you would have more of a complete offense. I mean, now it's 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 a game of specialists and right and this and that and the other but you know all I knew is I grew up playing football outside and I would play whatever position it was that I'd get in the game and I went from being the last kid pick to being a, the first kid pick and, and that's all I ever wanted to do was to compete and play and if it meant playing fullback tight end linebacker whatever I would I would play because I considered myself a football player and an athlete more so than just a fullback or a running back. So um, the game has changed, and, and it is what it is, but but there are, are athletes out there that can play as well as I did, and in and, 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 and some ways it, it, it comes back with some teams to that, but the majority of the teams are specialized deals, and, and that's what it's going to be for a while. So uh, I enjoy watching the game just as you guys do. Uh, and I enjoy seeing the, the teams that I root for dominate, and that's what I want to see happen today. So, Absolutely, we want to see it today for sure. Sam Bam Cunningham, USC football legend, member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the USC Hall of Fame, Rose Bowl Hall of Fame, U New, England, New England Patriots Hall of Fame, and hopefully budding movie producer, Sam Bam Cunningham, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Andy. Well, you know, I'm probably the Fourth Avenue Backyard Hall of Fame, too. I'm not quite <laughs> sure who votes for that. We'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. It's, it has been declared here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate it. Thank you.